Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video we have my Game Week 29 transfer plans. I know there is international break between Game Week 28 and Game Week 29, but we can still look ahead and look at what we are currently planning. If you're enjoying the content here on this channel, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. But without further ado, let's jump into it. So as always for these Sunday videos, I do have to start recording during halftime of the final game to get this out for you when the football ends. And it's not going particularly well for me that game because Martinelli has scored, Saka's got a goal and an assist. And to in a low scoring week, I did say that I expected this to be a very low scoring week and that it would really come down to captaincy. If you captain Saka, let me know down below in the comments. You have definitely won even at halftime. Fingers crossed for me, he doesn't continue to score in the second half because even though I own him, because he's been owned by so many players and captained by them as well, he's actually harming my rank every time he gets a return. Same with Martinelli and Erdegaard, they are both harming my rank. So... Hopefully Zinchenko picks up an attacking return and a clean sheet and hopefully Saka, Martinelli and Odegaard stop. But it will be a red arrow for me now regardless unless Zinchenko picks up an attacking return. But it shouldn't be too big of a red arrow. So even if Saka does continue to absolutely smash it, it should be sort of in the top 30, 40k, which is absolutely fine with me. It's not a huge red arrow. And in weeks like this, when I was only fielding 10 players, I'm not too disheartened by a little bit of a red arrow. There's not much to say on this week, to be honest. I'm happy I captained Kane because I was considering maybe going for Tony. I know Saka was the better captaincy option in the end, but I'm happy with my decision there. Watkins and Madison getting an assist, but no bonus point. Points, the entirety of the defense blanking unless Sinchenko picks something up. So it was a low scoring week. And we do say sometimes in FPL, it's a good week to have a bad week. And I feel like it's one of those. If you only picked up like 30 points, yes, it's a red, red arrow. But if you get a big red arrow in a double game week, you can score like 60, 70 points less than some people. But in a blank week such as this, it's probably a decent one to have a poor week. So if you've had a bad week, do not stress. If you've had a good week, I would love to let, let me know down below how many points did you get this week? You probably capped in Saka. So that's Game Week 28. Let's move on to looking at my team for Game Week 29. So looking ahead to Game Week 29, the bench boost is active. So I will be playing the bench boost in Game Week 29, regardless of what happens during the international break. I'm just going to get it done in Game Week 29. I currently have one free transfer and 7.6 million in the bank. Now that might seem like a lot in the bank. It's because I've only got one premium at the moment, but I need to make sure that I have enough money, especially just in case there are some price rises and price falls to do Tony to Haaland in game week 30. That is the plan just because Tony is on nine yellow cards. Now, if he picks up one more yellow card, he's suspended for two Premier League games. And also because of the betting ban that's incoming at some point, probably from April onwards. So for all of those reasons, and I don't really like Brentford's fixtures that much, Tony to Haaland in game week 30 will be happening. So I need to make sure that I leave enough money in the bank to do that. And I would say the same for you as well. Just make sure that you've got a route back to Haaland, which probably doesn't involve selling Kane because I think you'll probably want to keep Kane longer term. So looking at my team for Game Week 29, in my starting 11, I've currently got 10 double Game Week players plus Harry Kane. And then on the bench, and remember I am bench boosting, I've got Raya and Henry as two double Game Week players and then Saka and Zinchenko as the single Game Week players. So I would be perfectly happy rocking this team. I don't think the Brentford players are great for this week, especially the defensive ones. So Raya and Henry on my bench, I'm not overly happy with. And if possible, I tend to prefer not to bench boost with single Game Week players. That isn't to say single game players can't do well. It's just to say I would prefer to try and get the extra fixtures if possible. So I'm looking at Saka and Zinchenko as well as two players that I could potentially sell. Now, I, like I said, I'm, I'm recording this at halftime. Saka's got a goal and an assist in the first half. And Leeds haven't been fantastic defensively recently, as we saw against Wolves. So I don't need to sell Saka. But I do think Zinchenko, there are probably better defenders. In my starting 11, I don't think at the moment there is anyone I'd like to sell. We'll start with Kepa. I think the Chelsea defense is looking slightly better. I know Kepa hasn't kept that many clean sheets recently, but I still feel like he's fine as a keeper. They're both at home as well, two home fixtures. So I'm perfectly happy with Kepa. The Newcastle defense has been on a bit of a downward trend recently, but the reason I like the Newcastle defense is that they also are likely to have a double game week in game week 31. Not 100% confirmed, but likely. And that is with Brighton. So Brighton and Newcastle both likely to double in 31. If they don't double in 31, they will double at some point later in the season. So I'm happy holding on to my triple Brighton and double Newcastle. So even though I'm not overly happy with the double for Newcastle necessarily from a defensive perspective against Man United and West Ham, I am happy to hold on to that double Newcastle defense. And then like I said, the triple Brighton, not only a fantastic double in 29, they're also likely to have a double in 31 and they have a guaranteed double in 34 and 37. 
So if you're only on two Brighton assets, by all means bring in a third. They will have a blank game week in game week 32, but they're going to have three further doubles after game week 29. So I feel like triple Brighton makes a lot of sense. Rashford and Madison at the moment have my captain and vice captain. I think they are two of the best midfielders to own for this double game week. So absolutely no need for me to sell Madison or Rashford. Madison doesn't look like fully fit and Leicester are pretty stinky to be honest. They don't look like they'll convert any of the chances that Madison creates, but I'm not going to be selling Madison and I still feel like he's perfectly fine to purchase, assuming there are no issues over the international break with him getting injured. And like I said, Rashford, I think at the moment will have my captain's armband. We'll have to wait and see how I land on that before game week 29 deadline. And then the front three, I am perfectly happy with Watkins and Tony, both on penalties, both really decent data as well. And they're okay doubles. I don't particularly like either of them. Both of them only have away games. But the thing is with the likes of Watkins and Tony is because they're on penalties and because they're so talismanic, if Villa score goals, which you would probably expect them to in this double, and if Brentford score goals, which again, you would expect them to, you would hope that Watkins and Tony are involved in those. So I don't really have an issue with owning talismanic penalty takers from teams with slightly tricky fixtures because you're not expecting Aston Villa and Brentford to just never score in tricky games and if they do you would hope that they are the two that are involved in that so I'm happy keeping those and Kane like I said single game week not necessarily the best fixture but Everton are still conceding goals under Deitch and I do think that Kane is just an excellent asset to own and I'm perfectly happy having him moving forward so as you can see, the starting 11, I've got no real issue with. And Raya on the bench is an interesting one because, again, I don't think the Brentford defence is particularly great for this double, but Brentford's defensive data isn't shocking. And the thing is with Raya, as long as he's making saves, he could still pick up five, six points in this double, even if he concedes in both, which isn't possible for a defender unless they get a clean sheet. So I'm not necessarily looking to sell Raya either. So what it essentially comes down to is there are three players that could potentially be sold for me, which is Saka, Zinchenko and Henry. I feel like Saka is the probably the, the least likely to be sold and the least necessary to be sold as well. But the reason that I am still tempted is because there are so many good midfielders that you could pick. The likes of Bruno Fernandes, as you can see by the man on the thumbnail, I would quite like to bring him in. And I'm obviously not going to sell any of my other four midfielders. So if I do want to bring in someone like a Bruno or maybe even a Salah, who performs very well in these big, the big fixtures, it would have to be Saka that gets sold. So I'm kind of weighing that one up. The other two, I think, are a lot easier to sell. Zinchenko, I think, is fine to sell. I don't particularly like the fixtures moving forward for Arsenal. They have no future double game weeks as well. The only week where you would really want them is game week 32, which I plan on free hitting in. So Zinchenko... I'm a lot happier selling. And whilst Henry does have a double, like I said, I don't really like it defensively for Brentford. I mean, I've got already double, but I've already got double Brighton attack. I've got Rashford, who I plan on captaining. So I've got a lot of attackers against Brentford because I expect Brentford to concede goals in this double. So at the moment, Henry is likely to be sold too. So Zinchenko and Henry out for a minus four because I've only got one free transfer. It's just whether I also want to do Saka for a minus eight. In the next section, we're going to look at who we might potentially sell the likes of Zinchenko, Henry, and Saka for, how that would set up the bench boost for game week 29, and how the team would look in game week 30 and beyond too. So like I said, we're just going to make those transfers, talk about some of the players that I'm potentially considering and look how the team would then eventually look. A lot of people always ask, does it matter who your bench is? If you're bench boosting, then all 15 players score anyway. I just like to set up the bench with the weakest players so that I have a bit of an idea about what my bench boost would realistically score. I know some people like to put their best players on the bench because they think it's funny. I've got no issue with that. But for me, I want to see how my bench would score with who I think are the weakest players ahead of that game week. So like I said, the three players on the bench at the moment with Raya are Henry, Saka and Zinchenko. And they are the three that would be making way. Of course, there is an international break and anything can happen. If I am forced into making transfers, it might be that all three of those players stay into my team. But for now, I'm going to assume that hopefully my team gets through okay and I'm going to take those three out. There were a lot of questions around Esther Pinyam because he plays in Australia four days before the first game of game week 29 for Brighton. He could potentially be rotated. For what it's worth, I think it will be fine, but we'll have to assess that. And if we think there, if there are any press conference updates where managers maybe are a little bit less certain that some players will be back in time and jet lag, then maybe that will change my opinion. But I think even if he's only fit for the Bournemouth game, it is still a game against Bournemouth for an attacking fullback from a good defensive team. So I don't think there is any scenario, unless he gets injured, in which I would sell Esther Pinyam, even if I think he is a bit of a doubt. So let's look at those transfers. So like I said, Zinchenko and Henry are the two that are most likely to come out, then followed by Saka. I didn't do Henry to Chilwell last week, which actually paid off for me because Chilwell scored one point, Henry scored two, and it would have been for a minus four. So I would have been actually down five points if I'd have made the move last week. But I am still probably looking at making that move this week. So let's say Henry to Chilwell is the first transfer that I make. Obviously, like I said, I need to keep in the back of my mind that I need enough money to do Tony to Haaland in game week 30. 
The other transfer, I've got a couple of choices, really. I think I could just go for someone that I think is better long-term and maybe not perfect for double game week 29. I could go for Reese James and go for the triple up on the Chelsea defence, but that leaves the budget very, very tight to get Haaland back in for Tony and might require a second transfer for me. So I don't think I want to do that. And like I said, I don't necessarily think it's a perfect double defensively for Chelsea anyway. I like the two home fixtures, but you would probably expect Liverpool to score and Villa have been scoring quite a few goals recently too. So it probably comes down to Luke Shaw. Now, the issue with Luke Shaw and Manchester United is that Casemiro is suspended for four games, three in the Premier League. So both games in game week 29, we will be without Casemiro. Obviously, I'm a Manchester United fan. I know how bad we are when Casemiro is not in the team. I know Ten Hag was playing it down, but we really do struggle. So that does worry me slightly. But at the same time, I don't see many other better defenders and I also like the fact that Luke Shaw is likely to double in 34 and 37 as well. And I just think long term, because I'm not planning the free hit in either of those weeks, Luke Shaw also sets me up well for when Casemiro does return. So at the moment, Chilwell and Shaw, the two English left backs, are likely to be coming in for me. And they would actually probably come into the starting 11. It would probably be for, I think I'd bring in Luke Shaw for Botman. Maybe Chilwell would then still be on the bench, probably as the weakest player. I guess you could argue that Trippier is slightly weaker. It doesn't really matter. So at that point, for a minus four, the team would now be looking like this, with two better defenders now in, and the bench boost would all of a sudden have uh, one extra fixture and obviously no longer have Henry on there. The decision I then have to make is, do I also want to do Saka to someone like Bruno Fernandes or maybe a West Ham midfielder like Ben Rama or Bowen? At the moment, I'm probably feeling a little bit aggressive and wanting to attack double game at 29 as much as possible. And I might actually be tempted to do something like Saka to Fernandes. Now, before I actually confirm that, the, the reason for it is not only for game week 29 in which he doesn't have a double, he then plays Liverpool in 30, which isn't a shocking fixture, especially with the way Liverpool have defended at points this season. But then he's got West Ham away. In game week 32, I'm going to be free hitting almost definitely. And then in 33, 34, 35, 36, there are four really tough defences against City, Chelsea, Newcastle and Brighton. So... I'm not saying that Saka's a bad option. And again, because of the way that Saka plays for Arsenal, he is going to be involved in a lot of goals for them. And you would expect Arsenal to still con um, continue to score goals regardless of the, the opposition they're against. I just feel like the goals are quite spread out for Arsenal and these aren't easy fixtures for them. So I wonder if I could just get a Bruno Fernandes in that spot. So let's say I do make that. Again, now I would have a fully, basically, a Sorry, I would have all double gaming players apart from Kane. Kane would drop to the bench for me. And all of a sudden, that bench boost is looking very strong. Yes, I've had to take a minus eight to get there, which you need to take into account. But Raya, Kane, Chilwell and Botman, I'd be very, very happy with. I would still probably captain Rashford just because I think Fernandes will play slightly deeper in the absence of Casemiro. Fernandes and Shaw will not be as good as if Casemiro was starting and wasn't suspended, but I still feel like they are good options for Game Week 29, and they're also good options for 34 and 37 too. And I'm trying to not just look at Game Week 29 and also consider the way my team is set up for future weeks. Moving ahead to Game Week 30, this does leave me enough money in the bank to still do Tony to Haaland with 0 0.5 million in the bank for potential price rises and price falls. So the team is still fine set up that way. I would then captain Haaland, Kane would come back in for probably like McAllister or Matoma. And then Botman would come in for Estepinian. Just get the team set up. And then maybe McAllister to chill on. I probably end up benching my triple Brighton at this stage. So game week 30, the team, unless there again are uh, injuries in game week 29, the team would be perfectly set up for game week 30. And then remember, like I said, in game week 31, we are expecting a double game week for Newcastle and Brighton. I would have five double game week players and I'd have the opportunity to bring in another Newcastle asset as well for six double game week players if that double does happen. The team outside of that is absolutely fine. The reason, again, that I'm planning a free hit in game week 32 is just because Manchester United, Chelsea, Brighton and Man City are all likely to blank. At the time of me recording this, Man City and Brighton is a confirmed blank. Chelsea and Manchester United is just very, very likely. So I'm going to have Chilwell, Kepa, Shaw, Rashford, Fernandes, sorry, Fernandes, Haaland, um, Matoma, McAllister, Estepinian. I'm probably going to have eight or nine blanking players. And on top of that, I've got Botman and Trippier against Tottenham and I've got Kane as well. So there's a bit of a clash. The team just looks pretty shocking for game week 32 for me if I make the planned transfers. So I'm almost shoehorning myself into a free hit 32 with the idea being that the team is with them well set up for 33 and beyond because I've got players like Haaland, Chilwell, Kepa, Shaw, Fernandez, Rashford, who have double game weeks in 34 and 37. So that's the current plan. Let me know what you think of it. Let me know what your early transfer plans are for game week 29 too. And hopefully we can get a green arrow and push towards the top 10K going into the back end of the season.
So guys, there you have it. That is my Game Week 29 early transfer plans ahead of the international break. There will be a few videos over the international break. So do make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you've got your notifications on so that you don't miss those videos. And then we'll go hard just before the Game Week 29 deadline with lots of content, the deadline stream too, and hopefully attacking the biggest double Game Week of the season with a big green arrow. If you have enjoyed today's video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. But until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye.